This is from page 930 from the Oxford World Classics edition of Cecilia by Francis Burney. The whole of this unfortunate business, said Dr. Lister, has been the result of pride and prejudice. Yet, however, remember, if to pride and prejudice you owe your miseries, so wonderfully is good and evil balanced, that to pride and prejudice you will also owe their termination. Hello, my name is Celine, and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about a book that we think has inspired Jane Austen, particularly has inspired Jane Austen's title for Pride and Prejudice, and that is the book Cecilia by Frances Burney. Frances Burney, or Fanny Burney as my copy says, um, was an author who was active towards the end of the 18th century. And she's mainly known for her book, Evelina, which is a little bit smaller than this one. Evelina is an epistolary novel about a young woman who sort of has to find her way um, in London society. And to be fair, that is kind of similar in terms of Cecilia. Now, this book is really heavy, so I'm just gonna put it down. So when we think about Jane Austen, we think about sort of satirical, witty writing, a heroine who has to navigate various difficult social situations and a marriage plot. Now, Cecilia is a very similar work in those terms. It is also satirical, it is also quite funny at times. It does feature a marriage plot in which the main character has to navigate finding the right partner for life. But at the same time, there are also some key differences. In Cecilia, Cecilia, the main character, is an heiress and she has inherited a lot of money. She goes into London society and sort of has to find her way. But whereas in Jane Austen's novels, all of the things that happen are sort of within that small microcosm of society, the drawing room, etc. In Frances Burney's work, there is a lot more Let's call it shenanigans. Bernie sort of mixes in melodrama with that satire. So she often includes things like violence and sometimes even death. The heroines of a Jane Austen novel usually have relatively safe and stable home lives, even when there is some sort of threat to it. For example, in Pride and Prejudice, where, you know, all the sisters might not have a home after the demise of their parents. At the same time, there is a lot of stability and, you know, there won't be a burglar that comes in and murders them kind of thing. In Bernie's novels, however, there is a lot more threat of violence and it often even includes things like duels and sometimes even death. And Bernie uses this melodrama almost as a contrast to the satirical pieces. But that also means that if you're expecting a sort of Austen-esque almost comforting read. Cecilia is not quite that. I would say that there actually is no real safe home space like there is in Jane Austen in Bernie's novels. One thing that Cecilia does that I think is very interesting is that it takes the trope of sort of the lover mentor. In a lot of novels from the 18th and 19th century, there is like this, this amazing man who guides the heroine from innocence into adulthood and he will tell her what to do. He will tell her how to behave. He will tell her how to be and how to become the pinnacle of domesticity. However, in Cecilia, there are three guardians because she is sadly orphaned and her guardianship has been spread over three guardians. However, none of these three guardians are able to provide her with advice or guidance in a way that is useful to her. Throughout the novel she actually sort of bounces around between these three guardians who are supposed to know better and they're supposed to you know take on the patriarchal role of protecting this lone female character, this young female character who still has to find her way in the world. All three of her guardians take something that might have been seen as a virtue but take it so far that it has now become a vice. And it is up to Cecilia to sort of navigate between these polar opposites that she is faced with. For example, one of her guardians is extremely proud to the point where it kind of hinders him and makes him so proud that he barely wants to do anything or get his hands dirty, so to say. Another one of her guardians is so immensely prudent financially that he just doesn't spend money at one point he's supposed to dress up and go to a dress up party and he literally just sort of rubs soot all over his face and he's like, I'm done, I am not spending any money on anything. And Cecilia is sort of forced to take on these responsibilities herself. 
So what at the surface looks to be quite a standard plot, you know, the, there's the, the lonely orphan, she's amazing, she's virtuous, and there's the guardians and they're gonna help her. So it's sort of complicated in this novel. At the same time, you know, it does have the tropes that you might expect from an 18th century novel, which is about a marriage plot, so there are endless, endless lines of suitors, and they are all ridiculous, and they're all very much over the top, and they're all sort of vying for Cecilia's attention, and she has to batter them off one by one like they're just mosquitoes off to scent to suck her blood, in this case her blood being her large fortune. And to be honest, I mean, these parts of the novel are not subtle, but at the same time I do think it's very fun, it's ridiculous to see how they are falling all over themselves just to get close to Cecilia. And as a character, Cecilia is relatively virtuous and pretty much flawless. I think that is one part of the novel that is perhaps less interesting to the modern reader. So reading Cecilia as a character, she's not, I wouldn't say she's unrelatable, but at the same time she isn't as flawed as we like main characters to be. I think where the complexity of the novel and the interest of the novel lies is how Despite on the surface it seems to be quite a sort of black and white kind of novel, for example one of the journeys that Cecilia has to make is that, you know, she's very rich and she has to discover what she has to do with her fortune, which in this context usually means doing good works. So doing, donating money to charities, donating money to struggling families to make sure that, you know, they have to eat because there is no social security net in this time. At the same time, this question of how to use her money is complicated by the fact that some people ask for her money or ask for her charity and abuse that. So it is also about how to avoid being taken advantage of and how to decide who needs assistance and who deserves assistance and who doesn't. I found these parts of the novel very interesting because even though you can tell like there's this strong 18th century type of virtue that is quite clear, but at the same time how to actually practically take on these kinds of values is quite complicated in the novel, and I would say that sometimes there doesn't seem to be an easy solution, and I quite like that in this novel, and I find it really interesting to see the positions the characters would take, because, you know, at the end of the day you know that Cecilia is going to figure it out, she is going to be okay because that's the kind of novel this is. But at the same time, the way she gets there and the discoveries she makes along the way, I found actually quite surprising. It, this was a novel that was less black and white than I was expecting from a novel from this period. So in some ways I can quite clearly see how this might have inspired Jane Austen, and I do think it's very likely that Jane Austen would have read at least Evelina, but very likely Cecilia as well just because Jane Austen takes things from Bernie that I think Jane Austen sort of changes into things that she finds more interesting. Also there's just a lot more melodrama in Bernie and Bernie is not quite as succinct as Jane Austen is, so in terms of the texture of the story I think Jane Austen is very um, concentrated, like her tales are quite dense, whereas Bernie has the tendency to just sort of let the story breathe, let it flow where it wants to go, which also means that the story is very, very long. At the same time, I didn't find this a particularly boring or long-winded or a tough read. In terms of the language, I actually think that Bernie is very readable, and I find myself just quite happily sort of turning the pages. I knew I was in it for the long haul, I knew that it was going to be a bit of a process, you know, as a modern reader, we're just not really used to reading books that are this long, but at the same time it was quite an easy, pleasant read. Whenever I thought that I might start to get a little bit bored with the story, something would happen, some melodramatic twist was coming up to keep my interest. So if you're just curious how this novel might have influenced Jane Austen and you just want to see it for yourself, then I quite, I quite recommend Cecilia. At the same time, if you've never read a Regency author before, or if you're just really new to classics, this might not be the one that I suggest you start with, mainly just because of the length, not because of the complexity of the plot or the complexity of the novel. It does have a very large cast of characters, but because they're such types I don't think it's particularly difficult to keep them all apart. And even if you're not particularly interested in Jane Austen and you're just 
curious about the themes that I've discussed. I actually think that Cecilia is quite a fun novel. I've also read Evelina by Bernie and I didn't love that one. I actually found Cecilia a much more interesting and a much more fun novel than Evelina, even though Evelina is the more famous and more popular choice. So yes, if you're interested, do give Cecilia a shot and let me know what you think. I would love to hear more thoughts about this novel because there's not a lot of people that have sort of dived into Bernie's backlist. So if you have, let me know, I would love to hear. And thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye!